The major finding of our study was that vitamin D levels at birth are associated with risk of infection, risk of childhood wheezing, but not with risk of developing asthma. And what we did was we took a group of a thousand pregnant women and their children, and they were enrolled into what's called a birth cohort, and they were followed for many years. And this was done in collaboration with investigators in New Zealand. Uh, the main investigator on this study is Julian Crane, um, and he invited me to work with him on this project which involved taking that initial cord blood that was drawn at birth, thawing the blood that's been frozen for many years, looking at the vitamin D level, and then looking to see the association between that vitamin D level and what happened to the children. I think the major implications for uh, researchers are that uh, vitamin D has effects beyond bone, and this idea that vitamin D may affect risk of infection looks very promising. Um, and this is the first study that looked at vitamin D levels in the blood with future risk of infection. And I would say that the, the next steps are uh, probably to start doing clinical trials where you give uh, some pregnant women vitamin D, other pregnant women not vitamin D, and so that when children are born they'll have different levels of vitamin D in their core blood and then you see what happens to them. And, um, and this would be safe and this would be uh, very important to establish that it was really protective to increase the vitamin D level. It would be unusual for recommendations to change based on any one study, uh, and I think this one study addresses one aspect of vitamin D. So in terms of its implications for policy or for guidelines, what it will do is put people on notice that there's more to vitamin D than bone alone. And again, encourage the kind of research that's needed to really lock it in, to know for sure. And that's going to be other groups in other parts of the world repeating this study and finding the same thing. But also, ultimately, doing randomized trials where you randomly assign one group to get vitamin D supplement, the other group not, and then you look to see what happens in terms of risk of infection. And we're doing those trials right now in, in many different parts of the world. For the public, as they look at this information, um, I think it's very reasonable to wonder, as a pregnant woman, what is my vitamin D status? Do I need to take more vitamin D? And I would strongly encourage people, especially those living in more northern latitudes, which is most of the United States, all of Europe, all of New Zealand, uh, the populated part of Australia, Again, it works on both sides, right? North and south. Mm -hmm. But the farther you are from the equator, the more likely you are to have low levels of vitamin D. And I would encourage people in those settings, or who are heavier, or who are uh, darker pigmented skin, to ask their doctor about their vitamin D status and whether or not they should take a supplement. Now, one thing that can be done, in addition to taking a supplement during pregnancy, is at birth, uh, it's possible to give uh, infants Amount, small amounts of vitamin D. Um, and the exact dose, the best dose, we just don't know right now. Uh, but again, in northern latitudes, southern latitudes, or high-risk populations, it's very important, I think, to give a vitamin D supplement during the winter. I think my, um, I guess, a final overarching thought is just to really encourage people to, to think about vitamin D as more than a vitamin. Uh, it's actually a hormone. It's something that when we go into the sun, our body makes and it's transported in the blood and there's a receptor to vitamin D in almost all the tissues and cells of the human body. It's a lot more than bone and one of the most exciting things in, 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 in vitamin D research over the last decade has been the possibility that vitamin D affects many things beyond bone, things like heart disease, things like cancer, diabetes, and infection. And today what we've uh, reported is that vitamin D status appears to affect risk of infection in newborns. Uh, it's another piece of a big puzzle, uh, and again, we need clinical trials to really lock it in.